Jazakumullah khair Sheikh for um, agreeing for an interview for the Hanafi Fiqh channel. Just a few questions that we have that the brothers have been uh, requesting and asking, especially when it comes to the issue of taqlid. Many brothers say that why is it that we only have to follow one particular Imam when we can just take the authentic opinion from amongst the Imams and just follow that? issue in following a school is that if you number one to determine what is an authentic opinion within a school is uh, what's going to be uh, difficult for most people to do how do you determine what is authentic and what is not authentic each madhab and the scholars of each school they actually consider whatever they believe to be the most authentic opinion uh, in something so you know, for a common person to be able to understand what is the most authentic opinion, it, it requires scholarship. And people who have that level of scholarship, then obviously they have uh, their own ijtihad that they can uh, that they can follow. <coughs> so I think what we need to uh, look at here is that for a normal person to just pick and choose from whatever they want. Uh, it's highly problematic and the reason why it's problematic is because there's two issues number one there's the issue of uh, taking whatever you your nafs feels to be the easiest so then you start looking for the simplest things and many would argue would argue that that's not what we're looking for we're looking for authenticity now the thing is that how do you determine authenticity somebody has to tell you or you have to do research to back your stand that this particular aspect is authentic it may just be that you have been exposed to hadith that support a particular opinion maybe the shafi opinion or maybe the hanafi opinion in a particular uh, in a particular issue but you haven't seen the dalil for the other so it actually requires a lot of it actually requires a lot of uh, research which most people aren't able to do thirdly one of the other problems with following whatever as such you know whatever you feel like one of the problem the third problem with that is that you are then if it's not based on evidence uh, which requires research if it's not based on evidence then it would actually require you to just choose whatever you want the problem there is that it would re it would it would cause you to be following diff different opinions based on different methodologies so for instance when it comes to uh, the Hanafi school and the Hanafis, they say that it's okay to, uh, or rather, they say that touching a woman does not break your wudu. <clears throat> as long as there's no emission, it doesn't break your wudu. Whereas the Shafis, they say that it does break your wudu. While the Hanafis, in another issue, say that bleeding does break your wudu, while as the, uh, the, the Shafis say that it doesn't break your wudu. Now, if somebody takes the opinion of the Hanafis in one thing and the Shafis in the other thing in the sense that he reckons that my wudu is not broken when I've touched my wife and my wudu is also not broken when I've made uh, sorry if I've bled then he is taking the two opinions two liberal opinions from two different Imams the problem is the problem with that is that he is taking the conclusions of two different sets of methodology because the methodology that was used by Imam Abu Hanifa and the Hanafi ulama Imams in general to reach the conclusion that bleeding does break your wudu bleeding when the blood flows from its place does break your wudu while touching a woman doesn't they use the particular methodology to arrive at that conclusion while the Shafi is using their own unique methodology which Imam Shafi'i formulated based on his understanding of the Quran and Sunnah, he came to the absolute opposite conclusions in both of these issues. Now, if you're going to take one opinion from here, one opinion from there, you are literally taking the conclusions of two different sets of methodology. And that is, I mean, absolutely absurd to do that because you know whatever you do it has to be consistent it has to be according to a single methodology so I would believe that that's that would be you can say a technical problem a technical reason for not being able to just pick and choose um, that that's basically when we're talking about free pick and choosing there is certain adab for when a person can move over from one madhab to another one school to another 
and th there are certain requirements for that. Uh, some Hanafi ulama of the opinion that if there is a absolute need, then it, it's permissible to you know take from another school. But then w what they do qualify that with is they say that you have to then observe all of the different rulings according to that. So if you were to take the Shafi'i opinion, for example, on combining the prayers, then you would have to then consider your wudu broken if you touched your wife for, for men and uh, vice versa for women, for instance. Uh, so you would then have to observe all of the, the fiqh of Shafi'i according uh, or pertaining to that particular issue when you took from the Shafi'i school. This is according to some Hanafi ulamas, ulama. Whereas other ulama, they, other Hanafi ulama, they, especially those of the subcontinent, they consider it absolutely, uh, you know, that they, they, they are a lot more strict in not allowing individuals to just go across mother blinds because it, it obviously opens the door to a lot of pick and choosing eventually what they say is that when you do take from another madhab it needs to be a group effort to do that so for example if there is an issue in the Hanafi school which is really difficult for the community in general and there is another opinion within the Hanafi school or in another school then if ulama get together and they determine that this is a valid reason for coming out of their school then it, it may be you know that then they would deem that to be okay to follow another opinion uh, of another school because um, you have to realize here that we're talking about a a formulated methodology, uh, results of that methodology, a whole fiqh system, an entire school that has come, you know, for this many centuries, in order to go against that, that scholarship. If you just did that arbitrarily, you'd be completely disregarding all of these great scholars of the past. And clearly, I mean, these great scholars of the past could not have been so naive to have just followed something that they would not consider strong or whatever. Um, so yeah, hopefully that, that should give some explanation, inshallah, of the question that you've asked.